A toothpick? What? A toothpick. When did you eat? What a swell guy that we are. Not a toothpick between us. Well, you can't blame me. All you gotta do is get me fights. That's what a manager's for. I don't know, Squawk, I'll take the big ones along with the little ones. Of course, I'd rather have the small ones. Mm. And I'm just as fast as I ever was, see? As for my footwork, boy, take a look at that. Listen, goddess of the dance, sit down. Wise guy, huh? Say, there ain't many guys as pretty on their toes as I am. Yeah? Well, then why spend so much time on your back? Well, a guy gets tired once in a while. You should do your sleeping at home. Say, what's the use of arguing? You're my manager, ain't you? Well, don't rub it in. Well, then, get me a fight. Listen, Lefty, public hasn't forgotten that Pee Wee Murphy knocked you out in the first round. He didn't knock me out. No? No, I, I, I fainted. Well, why didn't you tell me you were scared of the guy? I wasn't scared of it. Huh. I just couldn't stand that garlic bread. Oh. I suppose it. Hey, you've been holding out on me? I hope I don't get indigestion. Don't let it back up on you. Say, I got an idea. Well, treat it kindly because it's in a strange place. Yeah. Huh? Say, now don't get mad at me. Look, what do you say we go to work? I was afraid of that. Say, that's not a bad idea. But just how does one go about getting a position? Well, I guess one reads the water if one can read. Dr. Marsden. Yes? There are two likely looking gentlemen out here to see you regarding the position as guards. Have you questioned them, Lesserman? Fairly, Doctor, or I shouldn't ask you to interview them. I've got to get a job. You've got to get a job. We've got to get a job. I. Looks like the panic's on here, too. That guy's only got one eyeglass. What do you mean, eyeglass? That's a miracle. A miracle? You know everything. Granted. My assistant, Mr. Westman, tells me that you know what is expected of you. Why, it's a cinch, Doc. Uh, we're specialists in our line. I need protection. I see no reason why you Two gentlemen can't handle this matter as well as anyone else. Then we're hard. Yes. Tonight, I'm making a final test of my invention. It's invaluable. And there may be people who would love to possess it. Well, what do we do? Don't let anyone in here. It's a very simple but important assignment. Well, we'll do such a good job that you'll be... Uh, as I say, we'll do such a good job, you'll be lucky you get in yourself. <laughs> there are three people, however, whom I want you to let in. George Lessman, my assistant. Miss Flint, my secretary, and the Ted Kelly. Okay. Now, gentlemen, here is a little on account. I'm the manager. Yes, he's the manager. Thanks a lot, Doc. Don't mention it. I shall expect you this evening. In the meantime, you might have a bite to eat. That's an excellent idea, Doc. The thought of food never entered my stomach. I mean my mind. <laughs> See you tonight, Doc. Yes. Good day, gentlemen. Good day to you. Hey, how about some beef, too, huh? Actually, you're in training. You're oh, in... I ain't in training. Don't give me that. All set, Doctor.
boy, Doctor. It worked perfectly. Thanks a lot for your more than willing cooperation. It was a pleasure and a great honor. Do you realize, Doctor, that this radio-controlled death bomb which you invented will make it absolutely impossible for an enemy to attack our country? I feel confident with the added speed that we have discovered that they can't get within 200 miles, either by air or sea. That is why the War Department is so vitally interested in my, shall we say, accomplishment. And, my dear Doctor, it is an accomplishment. You will become internationally famous. And the money is not to be lightly disregarded. I haven't lost sight of either of those facts. Tomorrow, we make our demonstration. I wish it were tomorrow. I feel a little nervous. Don't worry. The Secret Service is sending a man here. And in the meantime, I think we are sufficiently protected. <laughs> I still feel a little nervous. Probably nothing will happen, but you never... Forget it, George. It's forgotten, Doctor. My papers, they're gone. <coughs> he also took all the notes you just made. <coughs> I knew something was going to happen. <coughs> Who do you think is behind this, Doctor? It's hard to say. <coughs> Where? Miss Flynn? I saw her in her office just about a half an hour. <coughs> <coughs> We'd better investigate. You're all right, Mr. Why, why, what happened? The construction plans for my invention have been stolen. Mr. Westerman and I were gassed. Oh, that's terrible. Phone the War Department and give them that information. The number is capital 1144. <coughs> Operator, give me long distance, please. Doctor? I want to find out what became of the two men I hired to watch this place. You seem suspicious. I am. <coughs> well, Doctor, I guess you're right. I... There they are. This man's been hit on the head. This fellow's hurt. I hope that's Kelly. That's you, Mr. Kelly? Yes. What's going on around here, Doctor? My plans have been stolen. By these men? No. These are my guards. Oh, yes? Help us take them inside. Certainly.
He's coming to. Where am I? Oh, hello, Doc. How do you feel now? All right. But who threw that office building at me? Did you see who hit you? No. Of course not. If I had, it wouldn't have happened. Well, pardon me for not getting up. My name's Lefty Hogan. How are you feeling? All right. Oh, so they clunk red too, eh? Yes. But he's going to be all right. He's showing signs of life now. Well, that's the first time he ever done that. Come here. Yeah, he's all right. I'm awful sorry, Doc, but we did our best to protect you. Now, don't worry. Accidents will happen. But the next time, you'll be more careful and not allow anybody to sneak up behind you. You bet I will. From now on, I'm walking backwards. You know, like this. I'd like to speak to you a second, Doc. Certainly. Hey, has he come to yet? They aren't regular guards, are they? No. Why do you ask? Well, in the majority of cases like this, we've found that there's invariably someone planted on the inside. Well, I'm certain that these two men have nothing to do with the theft. I base that on the fact that up to a few hours ago, they knew nothing about my invention. Did you advise the War Department? Yes. Who else works here? Well, there's Lesson. Incidentally, he's a very competent assistant. And then there's my secretary, Miss Flint. Well, where is she? Her office is the second door. I think I'd better drop in on the young lady. Just as you say. Come in. Is there something I can do for you? Yes, answer a few questions. My name's Kelly. Oh, yes. Dr. Marston was expecting you. What were you and Dr. Marston's plans were stolen? In here. And you didn't hear any commotion? No. You see, my door was closed and I was busy. So no one locked you in or paid the slightest attention to you? I explained that point earlier. Oh, yes, yes. So you did. Did you see your assailant? Well, I didn't even see the guy who sacked me. Come on, numbskull, snap out of it. Doc's going to give us another chance. Yes. And if you see any mysterious character hanging around, I want him brought here. To me. Understand? I want to impress upon you that your job is very important. Why, the future of the country may depend upon you. That's straight with us. Come on. Now we've got the country to protect. Protect the country. Well, come on! You. How long have you worked here, Miss Flint? Why, just a few months. Tell me, where do you live? Is that question in line with your duty, or uh, is it something else? Duty? <laughs> Believe it or not. Oh, let me get this out of your way. Oh, yes, thanks. What have we here? Oh, just some last minute changes Dr. Marston made. Maybe you better let me take care of them. Oh, no. They'll be safe enough in here. You were so curious to know where I live, Mr. Kelly. Would you like to see me home? Oh, I'm sorry, but I can't. I'm afraid I'll have to choose between love and duty. But I'll call a cab for Oh, I've already ordered one. Well, I guess one's enough. <laughs> and it took a secret service man to figure that out? But it has its drawbacks. I can't take you home. Oh, pretty speed. Where are you going, Miss Flint? Why, home. I have a little work for you, if you don't mind. You'll excuse us, won't you? Certainly. Bye.
Yes, George. Stop that fellow. How do you feel now? Marvelous. This is a swell job. We spent half the time coming to. Well, that ain't nothing new for you. You always did. Come on. Take it easy. Who's going to help me out? I'd like to speak to you, Miss Flynn. Why? Why, certainly. What can I do to assist you? I noticed you were surprised to see I had your briefcase. Yes. What interest could you find in that? I picked it up in the alleyway outside that door. In the alleyway? I don't understand. How are you mixed up in this, Miss Flynn? I, what do you mean? I thought it strange you tried to get me out of your office in time for someone to come in and lift this. Oh, really? I gave you credit for more intelligence. Everything was timed perfectly. You're phoning for the taxi cab and that man making his getaway in it? Sorry I let you down again, Doc. Yeah, it's getting to be a habit. Well, you boys did your best. Gee, Doc, you're a swell guy. I think I'll call a cab and go home. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Why not? Well, this gentleman might think you stole the plans. Huh? Sorry, but I don't get the connection. Well, I called a cab and was accused of helping the thief escape. It's my duty to ask questions. Yes? Cab company. Mr. Kelly, hold on. It's for you. Thanks. Hello? Yes, I asked for a report. The only road two blocks and got out? Did you see him get into any other car? Oh. All right, thanks. Hmm. It strikes me that we are losing a lot of valuable time. That man and the one who fired the gas bomb should be picked up. I agree with you, Doctor. But without any description, it's pretty hard to find anyone. Yes. I presume you're right. Did you make any carbon copies of those notes? Yes, but he took those, too. Say, you're lucky he didn't take your typewriter. Oh, quit wisecracking. Can't you see they're trying to solve the mystery? Oh, I see. Now, if there's anything else I can do, we'd be glad to do it for you. May I use the phone? Why, certainly. Well, I don't see any further need of my staying here. What's the hurry? Why, why, I, I just thought that... If... Stick around. Hello, is that you, Dietz? This is Kelly talking. I'm over at Dr. Marson's laboratory. Yes, tell him to hurry. We'll see if we can get some fingerprints. Isn't there any lead you can give me? Is there anyone that might have a grudge against you? Why? No. But don't forget that my invention is worth millions. I haven't. What are you falling down for? You didn't get hit. No, but I got a hot job going, huh? That's an idea. Move over. Well, wait a minute. Jesus. Lesserman. My life's work. Ruined. Stop it! Stop him! He got out that window. 
Why, it's locked. He couldn't have gotten out here. Door was locked too, and from the inside. Come on, get up. I don't think I can make it. You're not very clever, Lesserman. What do you mean? There was no one in this room but you. don't mean that Lesserman faked this attack, but he destroyed my invention. It looks that way. If anyone else was in this room, I'd like to know how they got out. I didn't think you could do this to me. You know this gag, don't you? Sure. But I didn't do anything, Doctor. Please believe me. I was attacked. And the man got away through that window. But listen, that window was locked. This window was locked from the outside. What? You can't be serious. Why, it's an old gag. I've used it myself in my former days. Come here, I'll show you how it's done. Somebody tried to pin this, I, I say somebody tried to pin this onto him. Now what? You take the latch and you raise it. Then you put the match in there to hold the latch open. When you open the door and pull it closed, it slams and the match drops out. Now watch this. Now you've got to believe me, Doctor. Why, yes. Of course. Well, for a minute, it looked like you had your man, Mr. Kelly. Oh, yes. Now what? I'd love to go home. Well, there's nothing more we can do tonight. But tomorrow morning, I want to see you all at headquarters. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Is everything prepared for tomorrow morning? Yes. There mustn't be any slip-up, understand? Yes.
man go out there? No. I didn't see no man. Well, who's in that booth with the lady? No man. She all alone. Dinner for two, eh? Why, yes, of course. Won't you join me? I ordered for you. I had a hunch you'd follow me. Rice? Please. Are you in the habit of talking to yourself? Sometimes I think out loud. You strike me as being a pretty smart girl. I'd like to give you a little friendly advice. I'll have some tea, please. I don't know how you're mixed up in this Marston affair, but whatever it is, take it easy. <laughs> you know, this reminds me of a story I once read. It concerned a hard-boiled Secret Service man who was pursuing a frail, defenseless, desperate little girl. And this is an original idea, mind you. He had to choose between love or duty. What do you have? Tea. How'd the story end? It was a continued story, and the chapter ended where the Secret Service man ignored the girl and said to a couple of gentlemen, Well, I guess that's all we can do tonight. But tomorrow morning, I expect you all at headquarters. Interesting story. I can understand why someone would want possession of your invention and the plans, Doctor. But what puzzles me is that it has been demolished. The Navy Department has placed at my disposal an obsolete battleship, robot control. Today, I had planned to give the world a demonstration destroying it at a distance of over 200 miles from shore with my aerial bomb. Seven miles offshore. Perfect hit. Ship sinking fast. 237 miles offshore. I'll report to Commander Wilson immediately. You mean to say that the robot controlled battleship was sunk by an aerial bomb? Well, that's funny. Did you say a battleship was demolished by an aerial bomb? Yes. And the ship was 237 miles offshore. But that could only be done with my invention. But your invention was destroyed. Yes, I know. Seems to me that somebody is using your idea. But that's impossible. The plans were stolen only yesterday, and it requires months to build. Say, there's something screwy going, I say there's something screwy going on around here. Did you figure that out all by yourself? I'm afraid the solution is simple, Doctor. Someone who worked with you has made use of your knowledge. But Mr. Lesserman and I are the only two people who are familiar with Dr. Marston's work. That's not true. You see, I took another man's place. Maybe that man can clear up the mystery. What's his name? Walsh. Howard Walsh. Not the Walsh who killed the Secret Service man about six months ago. Yes. And when he disappeared, I engaged Mr. Lesserman to take his place. I'd like to get my hands on him. Charlie Hendricks happened to be a buddy of mine. I'm sorry, Kelly. If we can trace the source of that aerial bomb, I have a hunch we'll locate Hendricks' murderer. But that is impossible. 
There is no way to trace it. Kelly, it looks like you've got a pretty tough job ahead of you. And that's one job I'm going to figure out. I understand. I'm sorry about your friend. Really, I am. Thank you. I'm going to check with the fingerprint expert. Is it Dr. Marson's? It's a small footprint, all right. Looks like a shoe was recently half sold. It's all I could find, Kelly. There were no fingerprints. Where did you get this? Right outside. They went from that window to the office window on the other side of the hall. Hmm. This is Flint's office, eh? She could have worn this shoe. She might have. Whoever wore them was not very heavy and took short steps. Well, I don't suppose there's anything more I can do. I guess not. Thanks a lot. You certainly haven't much to work on. A clue will present itself. It's bound to. And the rest will be comparatively easy. I hope you're right. Good luck. I do too. Thanks. You know he's electricity anyway. Secrets of hypnotism. All right, Doctor. I'll take care of that in just a minute. How are you doing, Kelly? All right, I guess. Your desk? Yes. Pardon me, Doctor. Oh, take those to Miss Flint. Have a copy of them at once. Yes, sir. Well, I guess you won't be needing us anymore, huh? Uh, no. No, I, I'm afraid not. I sure hate to leave you, Doc. You know, I've got a kick out of working for you. And a few socks, too. <laughs> um, you don't suppose there's any chance of you changing your mind, do you, Doc? Yes. Everything's all right. I'll meet him outside. You know I can't talk now. Yes, yes, everything's taken care of. Oh, he isn't there, and neither is Miss Flint. That's funny. I'll say it is, Doctor. Lesserman's mixed up in this thing some way. I found that gas mask in his desk. Say, maybe they beat it. 
Well, I'm going to find it. Have you a car? No. Oh, yes, you have. Left me rented one. But you're paying for it. Yeah, yeah. You're my guest. Come on. Where do you think he is, Elon? Always he stays upstairs. I'll see. Who's there? It's I, Sally. Come in, honey. Well, I guess we stopped Marston. There's no question about that. But I wish you hadn't been in such a hurry to experiment with your invention. It proved a success, didn't it? Yes. But it so happened that Lesserman mentioned your name in front of a Secret Service man. And the conversation switched to the murder of Charlie Hendricks. You'll never get me for that. Did you lock that front door, Elon? Yes, sir. Are you sure you weren't followed? There's no reason for anyone to suspect us. We wore rubber gloves and I hid the gas mask in Lesserman's desk. That's fine. Maybe we were followed. Well, don't worry about it. I've completed a secret room. The apparatus will always be safe there. And I dare anyone to find the secret panel. See who it is, Elan. Yes. Come, honey. I want to show you something. Now, should you want to get in here, Turn this switch to here. The button is here. But with the current off, anybody can get in. Oh, no, no. When the door is closed, the current automatically returns here. Why, that's marvelous.
What do you do, Mr. Gentleman? Something I can do for you, sir? I want to see the young lady who just drove up here. There's no lady here. I know better. I saw you drive up together. Uh, you know, can't come in here, sir. You'll have to get out. You'll have to get out. Where's Miss Flint? I don't know. She's not here. We can see who's downstairs. I wonder what he wants. You'd better get on and find out. Yes, I guess so. He's followed me. You better get all your equipment in here in case he decides to explore. That's precisely what I've planned to do. You'd better tell her I'm here, unless you want to get yourself into a lot of trouble. Send you, Anna. All right. Say, how did you get mixed up in this thing? Mix up? Yes. What do you mean, mix up? Why, Mr. Lesterman, this is a surprise. You may go, Elon. Yes, Miss. How did you know I was here? I followed you. Followed me? Why? You might just as well tell the truth, Miss Flint. I overheard your telephone conversation, and I know that in some way, you and that Oriental are mixed up in a plot to ruin Dr. Marston. Your imagination is getting the best of you. If it weren't for the fact that I'm under suspicion myself, I wouldn't have had the courage to come here. Now, I didn't imagine that telephone conversation finding you here in this mysterious place. There's no mystery about this place. I live here with my aunt. You live here with your aunt? Hmm? I'd like to talk with your aunt. Well, uh, she isn't here right now. Pick that up. Yes, sir. Maybe your aunt came back. That's Elon, our servant. Do you mind if I look around? No. No, not at all. Interesting. What is it? Part of an aerial bomb like Dr. Marston's. Aerial bomb? I can't understand how it got here. It's possible the one that destroyed the battleship was operated from here. Oh, ridiculous. Flint, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to turn you over to the authorities. You'll gain nothing by that. Miss Flint! Miss Flint!
That's his car, all right. Hey, maybe he went up to the house. I say, maybe he went up to the house. We'll soon find out. By the time they get here, we'll be gone. We want to see you. You're just the man I'm looking for. We want to know what that gas mask was doing in your desk. Gas mask? Why, I don't know what you're talking about. I want to talk to you, Lesserman. Marston's down there with three other men. Lesserman's talking to them. What are we going to do? Remain in hiding until they leave, that's all. Isn't there any other way out of here? Yes, a secret passage down through the living room. But it's no good to us now. They're down there. You say you followed Miss Flint here? Yes. But why? What made you suspicious of her? I overheard a telephone conversation of hers. And I believe that she's not only guilty of the theft of the plans, but in the destruction of your aerial bomb. That's rather difficult to believe. Where is she now? I haven't the slightest idea. Uh, I went to the attic with her and... Uh, by the way, Doctor, I found these appliances on the floor. They're from my aerial bomb. Yes, I know. Well, where is she now? She disappeared. You mean she left here? No. I turned away for a moment and, uh, well, she just seemed to evaporate into thin air. Well, I'd like to take a look around that attic. So would I. Well, uh, if you gentlemen will just follow me. If you don't mind, I'll stay right down here. Yeah, no, I'll keep Lefty company. spooky about this place. Yeah. I can understand milk evaporating. Oh, cut out the wise cracks. Can't you see we're up to our ears in mystery? Oh, yeah. Well, I was just wondering, well, how come a woman evaporates? Uh, see, Red, look. There's a piano. Boy, ever since I was a kid, I always wanted to play the piano. But my old man put boxing gloves on me before I was big enough to stand up to one. Well, you'd have made a better piano player. Yeah. Huh? Now, where were you standing when Miss Flint disappeared? I was standing right at the corner of that table. And where was she? Miss Flint was standing right there. Well, then she couldn't have gone out that door without you seeing her. Oh, no, absolutely not, Mr. Kelly. Well, there must be a secret panel on that wall. I'd like to know who's mixed up in this with Miss Flint. You know, Red, I think we're in the wrong racket. You're telling me this business of getting sucked in the nose and knocked unconscious is for suckers, not for smart guys like us. You're right. Now, take this joint, for instance. It ain't natural. 
Anything's liable to happen, and it's just our luck. It'll happen to us. Well, quit wishing for it. What, 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 stop that thing, will you? What's going on around here? That's the sign of something. Well, I don't believe in sign, but I'm not so half for pictures jumping off of the wall. Yeah. Maybe our nerves are just a little on edge, huh? Hey, what are you doing? I'm going to take this big picture down just in case. Oh, well, get down off there and quit touching the thing. Stick your hand in there. You might bring it back a stub. Oh! Hey, I wonder, I wonder what that's for. To scare people with, I guess. Well, they did a pretty good job on us. What happened? T -t -t Take a look in there. Are you sure, Lesson, when you followed Miss Flint here? Why, yes, of course. Miss Flint, for you, Doctor. I'm sorry you had to get mixed up in my affairs, my dear. Now, don't you worry, Uncle. These are my plans, stolen from the office. I wouldn't be surprised what that aerial bomb was shot from here. If that is true, you are very close to the murderer of Hendricks. I'm going to find that secret room. Maybe I can help you. I only got two hands. Then try and use your head. But I don't know anything about opening secret rooms. Hypnotism. <laughs> what if there's anything to this junk? I don't know. I was never hypnotized. Let me see. First, you get your subject's mind blank. And, and that ought to be a sense for you. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute, come here. Stand right there. Oh, I don't want to play. Shut up and look me in the eye. Which one? Both of them. Now, Alakazi, Kazi, Kaza. Alakazi, Alakazu. Alakazi, Alakazoo, Alakazook, Alakazawam, Kazook. Think of nothing, nothing. I think I'll try the pin gag now. Lefty, put that away. Put that away. Don't kid, you might shoot somebody. Lefty! 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 Don't! Lefty, come on, kid, snap out of it. Come on, I was only fooling. I didn't think it'd work. Lefty! Come on, Lefty. Put that gun away. You're gonna hurt somebody now, kid. Come on. Lefty! Hocus pocus, bananas, anything. The book. The man's head to time. Let's go. Let's go. Did you hear that shot? Yes. 
Something must have gone wrong. Where's he been? Why didn't you see him? He went down the passageway. No. He must have passed me in the dark. Where am I? What happened? Who hypnotized you? Who what? What? For red. Huh? What? Oh, well, I found this book you left downstairs, and I tried it out on Lefty, but, gee, I didn't think it had worked. I'm sure it didn't. Whoever selected Lefty for a subject is quite proficient in the art of hypnotism. Did I do that? Yes. To think I shot a man. Where were you two standing when this happened? What, downstairs in the living room, right near the fireplace. I'm going to take a look. Mind if I go with you? No, come along. You two stay here and take care of Leslie. And stop anyone that might come out of that room. What room? Say, maybe he's hypnotized. I, I say, maybe he's hypnotized. I heard you. I take those plants now, Doctor. I'm sorry to bother you. Well, I guess you better give them to him. Who are you and what's it all about? Me? Eden. I live here. the second time you've stolen these plans. I don't understand. Who is the man with Marston? His name's Kelly. He's with the Secret Service. He'll never give up till he finds us. I'm afraid you're right. Are you working for Sally Flint? No. Me work for nobody. I wonder where that passage leads to. Take a look. I tell you who I work for. I tell you, who got the other aerial bomb. I also tell you, who killed the secret serviceman. Who is it? His... His name is... His, yes? His... Uh, name. Doctor. Yes, Kelly? Go to the head of the passageway and don't let anyone get out. I'm going to break in that upstairs room. All right, Kelly. Gee, I'm sorry about your hand, Mr. Lesman, but I didn't know what I was doing. Forget it, Lefty. It wasn't your fault.
Stay where you are. Both of you. We can explain, I'm sure. I'm afraid you're going to have a lot of explaining to do. So this is where the aerial bomb was controlled from. Walsh! Walsh! Well, you're going to answer for the murder of Charlie Hendricks. But my uncle isn't guilty of that. I tell you, he isn't. Your uncle, eh? Innocent men don't hide, Miss Flint. I wouldn't have had a chance. If I'd given myself up, no one would have believed my story. But why did you steal Dr. Marston's aerial bomb? I didn't steal it. The invention is mine. Dr. Marston stole it and hypnotized me into killing that Secret Service man. That's true, Mr. Kelly. And my uncle was afraid to claim his invention for fear of being arrested. Open that. Come up here, Marston. You can't pull that trigger, Kelly. You can't. Can't. If anyone makes a false move, I'll have Kelly shoot them. You can't make a killer out of him. I'll make a killer out of anyone I choose. <laughs> Secret Service man, it'll be just the opposite. But I'll be out of the country before the police can get me. <laughs> now, point that gun at Walsh. Pull the trigger. I'm sorry, Marston, but I'm not a very, very good hypnotic subject. Well, Mr. Walsh, now that you've been cleared, I guess you won't be needing a couple of bodyguards. No, 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 no. I take care of Mr. Walsh. Oh, Say, ain't you the guy that clunked me on the bean in the alley? Yeah, how about that? That's my secret. You know, I didn't like you the first time I saw you. Then I'm to understand you've changed your mind, is that it? What do you think? Well, we gotta make a living somehow. Now that he's my slave, let's see what I'll make him do. He always did want to play a piano. Go 
Go, my fool, and play. Say, you know, I think there's something to this hypnotism. Look her in the eye. Take her in your arm. Now, kiss her. <sighs> Pretty good, huh? <laughs> good? It's perfect. Mm -hmm. 